comes to hungry people. Yes. Mandadaya. And he commanded a blessing on unity. Yes. Come on, amen. amen. He commanded a blessing on unity. Yes. When there's unity, more come. Yes. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Mandadamana. Huramaya. Oh, God. Oh, God. You can be seated. I'm going to um, just do a little exhortation here. And I, I'm only doing this because I felt like well, earlier as, as I was praying today, spending time in the presence of the Lord, I started getting this download. And I, I told the Lord, how many understand that God wants us to move one day at a time with him? Amen. How many know that? And a lot of times we get overwhelmed because we're trying to take on too much. Amen. And we need to take on what God says for this day. Amen. And I felt like God was saying to me uh, that he wanted to do something special tonight in the area of understanding the glory of God in you. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I feel like that people don't understand what's inside of them. Amen. And we want to help open that up. Part of the uh, part of the, the word that Pastor Vern was given, amen, about your um, identity, basically you coming into, you know, coming into who you are, walking in that calling. Come on, amen. amen. God wants to break, come on, the fear. Amen. amen. And he wants to create within you a stronger identity. Come on, amen, so that you walk in who you are in God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. God wants you to get bold, amen, about him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and, and if you don't know what's in you, you're not going to be bold. Yeah. You got to know what you're carrying. How many a person with a gun is packing, right? They know what they're carrying, right? There's a different confidence they have when you deal with them. How many know what I'm talking about? Because they know they're going to have a backup. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Understand you're packing. Come on, something. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. you packing something and God's about to release it. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God don't want the church dependent upon one or two people. He wants, to un he wants to unlock what's inside of you. Come on, amen. All right, let's, turn, let's go into the Bible real quick and look at some scriptures. And, um, oh, God. I don't know about you, but I feel lit right now. Come on, amen. I'm lit. Ah, hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me one time, and he told me, he said, Calvin, the nations are inside of you. He said, the nations are inside of you. And, and, of course, the Lord has blessed me to travel to over 14 different foreign countries, and I'm looking to go to more. In February, are we going to uh, Sierra Leone? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's going to be pretty unique for me because a lot of the slaves, you know, got, they, they cut off right there. And they were taken, come on, to different places right from there. So I'm going to get a chance to be there in that atmosphere. And amen. Hallelujah. How many know my, my forefathers had to be strong? Come on, amen, because I'm here. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. They had to be strong because I'm here. Hallelujah. But I was so thankful, amen, that God would give me an opportunity to do that. We're going to be doing a, an uh, open-air crusade there, and we're going to be ministering to leaders. And the last event we went to, I posted on Facebook, and some of you saw it, there was probably, uh, probably about 10,000 people that came uh, to this, uh, this open-air crusade. And I was worshiping, and there were people. Many people came up to me at the end and said, now we know how to worship. Now, now that was... How I many? That's a compliment. Come on, amen. That they could be impacted. That, I mean, they worship God. They dance. They sing. They pray. Come on, amen. They pray more than we pray. Their intercession, come on, is a lot more aggressive than ours because we don't, we don't, we don't have to battle. Our battles are different. Come on, than what their battles are. So their prayers are more intense. How I many know they birth that thing? Come on, amen. That's why they can come over here and they be like, "What's wrong with you?" Come on, amen. <laughs> why, why don't you pray? What's wrong with you? Because over there, I mean, we, when we did this crusade, they had a tent outside, uh, right outside, uh, next to the, uh, to the stage with people in intercession for the entire time we were, we were ministering. Come on, amen. And we saw, man, we saw 400 people get saved. One church got a, 100 people added to it that was there. Come on, amen. How I many know that, my goodness, that's called addition and that's called God blessing. Come on, amen. People were filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, amen. It was awesome. So God said the nations are in you. How many know the nations? Some of you got the nations in you. 
Now, all of us are called to preach the gospel. Some of us are carrying the nations in us. We will not be satisfied until we go to a different nation. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. The nations are in us. It's part of our calling and destiny. Amen. Oh, glory to God. And I remember God told me this one time. He says, Calvin, I, I want you to prophesy to the nation of Kenya. When we were in Kenya, he said, I want you to prophesy to the nation of Kenya. And uh, this was several years ago. And I was like, Lord, okay, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm used to giving, prophet, you know, personal prophetic words and things like that. He said, just get up and, and say what I say. Well, we had been doing the meeting for about maybe a, a day or so. And we had back-to-back -back teachings and information, but there was no real breakthrough. It was just teaching and information. All of a sudden, I got up there, and I started prophesying to the nation. The whole place broke wide open. After it broke wide open, the prophetic, how many of the prophetic is supposed to be like that spear? Come on, amen. That breaks and penetrates the darkness, that breaker anointing. And after that prophetic was released, it opened up the atmosphere, and now all the services were lit. Come on, amen. That's why we need prophetic people around us. Come on, amen. Apostolic people, and we need to activate the prophetic in our own life through being in the presence of prophetic people and also by learning how to cry out for prophecy. The Bible said desire the gifts and especially prophecy. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Why? So you can edify, come on, the church. All right, let me get to this topic. Uh, real quickly, go to Exodus 33. Uh, and uh, we're going to read this verse, these verses here. Pray with me. Hallelujah. I've slowed down a little bit. And uh, I had to slow down when I was in Africa because, you know, when you talk fast, they can't understand what you're saying. The translator has a hard time interpreting what you're saying. I was a fast talker. Come on, amen. So I had to purposely go like this. Um, the Lord said, come on, I had to con <laughs> I had to go real slow. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. All right, 33 verse 17. And if you're having a hard time uh, hearing me, just throw up a white flag or something. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll see it and I'll say, oh, they have I'll slow down. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. That means he wanted God's presence to come with him. He didn't want just an angel. He wanted God's very presence. He says here, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee. Now watch this. Show me thy glory. How many know he had already experienced the presence of the Lord? He had been, come on, in the, the mountain. He had seen the fiery burning bush. Come on, amen. He had seen it expressed. Uh, uh, later on, you find out he, I think it probably was in that same, in the same area here. His, when he came down from the mountain, his face had shone. Come on, with the presence of God, with the glory, the light. Right. Amen. Uh, but what I want to get at here is that he had, he knew about the presence, but he wanted to see the glory. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. He wanted to see everything. He wanted to see the weightiness of God's presence. Come on, amen. Now, watch this. It says, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy now I heard someone say this and I think this is important that God had to actually speak out these things to keep from amen his glory destroying Moses come on amen hallelujah part of a, a protection for him I am mercy come on amen I am forgiveness come on I am come on amen this is an important thing to understand this is God releasing his glory. He directs his glory. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. He, he releases the glory. He directs. So every one of you has a directed glory. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. A directed assignment, a directed glory. Come on, amen. And we want to help unleash that today. Amen. Or the understanding of how to get there. And he says here, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy and said, thou canst not see my face for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me and thou shalt stand up on a rock. Now, how many know that rock is Jesus Christ in the New Testament revelation? And it shall come to pass. Come on, amen. And my, I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And also, I will take away my hand. And thou shalt, be, uh, thou shalt see. Come on, I, I went too fast. And so when my glory pass by, that will I put thee in a cliff of the rock. So, how many know Jesus is the cliff in the rock? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. He is that place. He is that place where we experience the glory of God. Come on, amen. We cannot experience the glory without Jesus. Come on, amen. He is the way the glory of God is revealed and, and brought forth inside of us. And it says here, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Isn't that powerful? And if you notice that Moses was the one who wrote the, the first five books of the Bible, and that is the history. Come on, amen. 
he was seeing the back parts. Come on, amen. Now, I, I, this is really powerful because he didn't see the face because it wasn't his assignment. Come on, amen. This was not the revelation for him at this time. No man will see my face and live. Why? Because when you see, come on, amen, his face, now I really believe there's something dies in you. Every time you start seeing deeper into the things of God, something starts dying in you. Come on, amen. Every time you start walking in new glory, something starts dying in you. Come on. There's things you got to give up. There's areas of surrender. And that's why a lot of people don't want the glory. Come on, amen. They're like, they're like a little presence. You know, let me get a little presence, you know. I want a little presence. But I don't actually want the actual glory of God. Well, understand, whether you want to have it or not, it's in you if you're a born-again believer. You are packing glory. Ooh. Now, I do understand this. The Bible says, you know, Pastor was reading this earlier, that let no man glory in the flesh. But let me, let, me, let me throw something out to you, a real deep thought here. If you stole God's glory, where would you put it at? Because God's glory is kind of big, amen? Listen, I don't want to be on that side of God, come on, amen, that I try to steal his glory. Because what happens is I become a part of his glory still. Oh, y'all, y'all, did y'all catch that? Whenever I start to operate in a rebellion toward God, I actually become a part of his glory still. Because he will let me be rebellious so that he can reveal his glory. Come on, amen, hallelujah. God going to still get the glory. He going to get the glory whether you come on, rebel, or whether you do what's right. God going to get the glory. Amen. I don't want to be on that side like Pharaoh. Come on, amen, hallelujah. Who rebelled. Come on, amen. And God uh, hardened his heart. And, and God increased his glory. And revealed more of his glory. Come on, amen. I want more of God's glory, but I know that the more glory of God that is revealed and, and unleashed in me, the more I die. Come on, amen. The more things, I can't do some of the things I want to do. The reason why some of us cannot find the realm of glory that's in us is because we're still holding on to our life. Mm, come on, amen. Because we are holding on to our life, we are restricting the glory from being manifested. God's saying, I want you to die so that I can live through you. Come on, amen, hallelujah. So if you're dealing with any confusion or disappointment or whatever, I, I've always connected disappointment to lust. Come on, because God is your source. Come on, amen. The scripture says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. So whenever we get disappointed, whenever we get lust in us, this thing flowing in us is a sign. Come on, amen, that there's some area in us that is still driven to do it. Come on, amen, our way. And God says, I want you to surrender so I can do it my way. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Do it my way. I remember one time I was singing a song. I was worshiping the Lord, and the song was very prophetic, you know. And I thought, man, I, when I was singing this song, I thought for sure, you know, God was getting a hold of the people out there, you know. And the song was, amen, <laughs> uh, put it aside, put it aside, pull it down, pull it down. I mean, it was anointed, man. Put it aside, pull it down, those things you thought you heard. Put it down, put it aside, those things you thought you heard. And I'm singing this song. I'm in full-blown singing this song. Man, y'all better get this revelation. Come on, amen. Y'all better get this revelation. And God was saying to me, Calvin, I'm talking to you. Come on through this song. Come on, amen. The things you thought you heard. The way you think it should go. <laughs> the way your mindset is concerning how I'm going to move. He was telling me to put it down. And as I began to put it down, I began to realize this. God was actually taking away everything I was trusting in. Sometimes we trust in the way we do things. The system of, of church and everything. We trust in that. We don't trust in the Lord. We trust in the system. What I like about your pastors is they say, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do tonight, come on, amen. What, whatever, however flow he wants to take us, come on, amen. We want to go with the flow of where God is wanting to go. Listen, church, we have tried to manufacture the glory of God. We tried to produce the glory of God, and God is actually bringing judgment on systems, come on, that he didn't establish, come on, in his church. Come on, Amen. We have tried to create moods so people can feel good at church. But how many know God wants your flesh to get up on that cross and die for real? Come on, amen. It's not about how you feel. Come on, amen. It's not about, come on, whether you feel like going to church or not. 
It's not about whether you feel like pressing into prayer. Come on. It's that, it doesn't matter what you feel like. God's not about your feelings. God is a God who operates and functions by faith. And God has a purpose, an eternal purpose, that he will get the glory. Come on. If you will surrender your feelings, come on, amen, and yourself to God. He'll get the glory. Come on, amen. How many want God to get the glory? He's going to get the glory. Hallelujah. He's going to get the glory. The word for glory in the uh, Hebrew, or uh, yeah, the Hebrew is kabod. And it means this. It means weight, splendor, abundance, riches, honor, glory, dignity, reputation, honor, reverence. Come on, amen. You know, years ago, we used to, we used to use this slang term. A lot of times around, you know, African-American people, man, man, that's fat. Oh, that's fat. Somebody said, that's fat. Do you know God is fat? Come on, amen. Seriously, God is fat. God is, come on, amen. God is fat. Come on, y'all. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I said God is fat. Come on, hallelujah. Now, understand what I mean by that. God is abundant. Come on, amen. God, listen, you see God, he ain't come on nothing to play with. Come on, amen. He packing. He lit. Come on, amen. He is glorious. Come on, amen. It can't even be measured. Your mind can't fathom it. God has to actually speak out what he wants you to see because it's too much. Ooh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's why part of the glory is our doctrine and teaching. What is your teaching? That's part of the glory. Because how do you see God? How do you perceive God? Do you know that God is big whether you want to make him big or not? Come on. When you magnify God, what you're doing is, how many know in a magnifying glass? Come on, amen. Doesn't actually change, come on, what, it, what the actual thing is. It just amplifies how you see it. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. God is bigger, come on, than what you can imagine. He's wanting you, come on, to magnify him, but your perception has to change. When you start seeing how big God is, it's going to affect how you do things for the kingdom. Oh, yes, it is. Because you're going to rely upon him more than your own self. We have magnified ourselves, come on, amen, our abilities and how we do things above, come on, God and his magnificent glory. His weighty glory, his weighty presence. So God is fat, y'all. Come on, amen. Go to Isaiah 6 real quick here. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. You know where I'm going. Some of you know this scripture by heart. Amen. But if you look here in the sixth chapter of Isaiah and in verse 1, I'm going to read just a moment here. Give you a chance to get there. Hallelujah. I'm watching the time because we have a certain amount of time. And then we're going to just step into this glory realm. Because somebody said the glory is about to hit like never before. Now watch this. In the year that King Uzziah died, watch this. Now wait a minute. In the year that King Uzziah died, I want to stop there for a moment. Uzziah was this very, very talented, gifted king. I mean, he made weapons, uh, machine war machines. This man was very, very intelligent, very, very blessed of God, gifted. Come on, amen. He went by Azariah as well. He was one of the ones... Come on, who, who wanted to go into the temple and be a priest. How many remember that? He wanted to go into the temple and be a priest. He interrupted, come on, the, the other priests that were present and went in to offer sacrifice or incense to the Lord. That's what it was, incense. And the scripture says that when he did, because he was so prideful, see, when he did, leprosy came up in his forehead. So the priest could actually put him out. They said, we couldn't do nothing with you before with all your pride. But now that you've come in the temple and God has revealed a leprosy in you, you're unclean. And according to our rules and laws, no leper can be, come on, amen, in the sanctuary or in that place, that holy place. Yeah. So what happened? He was put out. Come on, amen. amen. But he was like 80 priests or so. They put him out. He was able to, and now, but when he died, when he died, what happened? I saw the Lord. Mm. Oh, come on, somebody. When this prideful, come on, amen, self-made individual, come on, amen, was moved out of the way. Then he could clearly see God. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord, and he was high and lifted up. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Sometimes people can be so big in your sight till you don't see God. 
And God wants the image of that person to die. Come on, amen. So that you can see who he is. Come on, church. Do you know the five offices have been, 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 been made elitist? Come on, amen, in the church. And people have glorified the five governing offices more than they have the sonship calling to every believer. God's called you to be sons and daughters in his kingdom. The highest call is not an apostle. Come on, amen. The highest call is to be a son. Come on, y'all. Amen. When you stand before the Lord, he ain't going to, you know, you say, well, I'm an apostle. He said, well, put the title away here. I want to know who you are. Come on, amen. Who are you really? See, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be brought into the kingdom as a son or a daughter. Come on, amen. God's kingdom is not about titles. Come on, amen. And prestigious positions. Come on, amen. And self-exalted people and individuals. I'm telling you, God is judging this thing in the church. He's judging this system. That's why you see a lot of confusion around this apostle people. I've seen people, it's so weird, they, they come up with this stuff. Like, for example, one particular guy, he was an apostle the first time I saw him. And the next time he was a bishop and his wife was the apostle. So I said, what, what's, what? I said, I thought a bishop was just an overseer. The Bible says that. See, what happens, people get caught up in trying to promote themselves. So they start changing their titles and everything, promoting themselves, self-exaltation. When this self-exalted person was removed, then they could clearly see the Lord. Yes. Come on, amen. Yes. The prophet was able to see the Lord clearly and reveal the Lord. Now, here's what he saw. He says, I saw the Lord, and he says, high and lifted up, and his train of his robe filled the temple. Somebody say, God is fat. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess with y'all. That means big buttocks. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yeah, done. God is carrying it. Come on, amen. He's weighty. Come on, amen. He's weighty. Come on, amen. Abundant supply. Mm-hmm. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Abundant supply. Hallelujah. Somebody said abundant supply. Now, the scripture says, now, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying to be funny a little bit, but that's true. I mean, it's, it, he said his train was filling the temple. Now, this is pretty heavy. We're talking about a temple. So that means that when God is walking around, come on, amen. Oh, y'all need to help me. Y'all, come on. Are y'all seeing this? God's walking around, and it's like this. It, it's, oh, man, that's powerful. It's just flowing. Come on, amen. And it's filling the whole temple up. The whole temple is filled with the glory of God as he walks because God is fat. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Abundant supply. Somebody say abundant supply. Oh, I love the word. Come on, amen. Now watch what he says here. And above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, it's not just in the temple here. He, they're declaring the whole earth is full of God's glory. Nobody escapes. Come on, amen. Because God's glory is filling the entire earth right now. And when we walk in it, and I'm going to tell you something about the church, because heaven and earth, come on, has the church in it. Come on, Amen. And when we begin to be unified with heaven, come on, amen, there is going to be a move of the God in the earth that we've never seen before. Listen, church, I'm telling you right now, the devil has been trying to steal from us the revelation of God's glory coming to the earth. There are people who are saying, oh, there's no revival coming. People making that stuff up. I'm telling you right now, the devil is a lie. There is coming a glorious move of God that no man can control. That no man can own and purchase, come on and use and purchase. They can't buy it. They can't merchandise it. There's coming a glorious move of God, and we will see that manifestation of glory. Come on. Oh, man. I don't know if y'all getting this. This is good right here. Hallelujah. Somebody said, look at the person next to you and say, you back and tell him. Come on, say. Come on, don't be afraid of them. Tell them, say, you, you packing. And then say, me too. 
Tell them. Someone. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. We pack it in here. Come on. Amen. I'll tell you this little testimony real quick. We're packing. I went in to the hospital to pray for one woman. Come on, amen, hallelujah. Well, I was getting ready to go to church. I was all right, fired up. And somebody said, can you go pray for my mother in the hospital? I said, sure, I'll go pray. So I went to the hospital. Well, you know, I had to try to find it first, you know. So I went to a room. I couldn't tell if the lady was in the room. I said, is so-and-so in this room? And they're like, uh, who? <laughs> they looked at me down. It's a strange black man. He's coming in to, come on, amen, <laughs> to the building. Come on, amen. So I just said, okay. Uh, they said, yeah, she's back here. I said, okay. Well, as soon as I walked in, because I had already been praying and already prayed up and ready, I, I started talking like, you ready to live, aren't you? That's how I started talking to the woman. Come on. Now, how many know you packing? Come on, amen. Somebody said, you packing. So you got to activate this thing on the inside of you. That glory is ready to come out and ready to be revealed. So what I did was I walked up to the, to the woman, and I just started saying, I started talking the word of God to her immediately. I didn't even, just, I didn't even say, how, how are you doing? I didn't talk about nothing. I just started immediately saying, you're ready to live, aren't you? And the minute I began to talk, the spirit of God began to give me what to pray. And as I started to pray, you know, one of the ladies came over. There, was, there she came over. She was shocked because she didn't know what to do because I'm, I'm just, I'm full-blown. Come on, amen, releasing the glory. Come on, amen. Come on, hallelujah. So she, I, I came up and started praying, and she came up, and she said, well, I'll just stand with you. So I started praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Come on, amen. And as I'm praying, come on, amen, all of a sudden, the other lady said, I got to go. She just left out. She couldn't take it. It was, it was something. Was, the glory was starting to manifest. She walked out. But as I'm leaving out the door, the woman in the bed next to her is weeping, full-blown tears. The Spirit of God has hit the woman while I'm praying for the other woman. You guys, listen, you got that same thing inside of you. Come on, amen. Don't turn down opportunities to pray for people. Go for it. Come on, amen. Release the glory of God on the inside of you so that things can begin to happen. And then I found out that this woman who they were expecting to die is still alive right now. They, they didn't expect her to come out of the hospital that day. Y'all, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Release the glory that's on the inside of you. The same glory is on the inside of you. Amen? All right, go to Ephesians 5, 7 real quick here. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, 7. All right, I'm getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm, I'm going to tell you this, that you uh, have glory in you, and you didn't steal it. Come on, amen? Uh, it's already in you, and you didn't take it. God put it in you. Come on, amen. Look at uh, uh, Ephesians 5, verse 7. For you were once darkness. Look at that. But now you are light in the Lord. Look at that. Walk as children of light. Amen. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Amen. So you are a child of light. If we peeled you back, we would see the light. Come on, amen. My dad, my dad had this powerful revelation. He was on his way. He's passed away now, but he was on his way. Uh, he said he had this, this vision, and he said all of a sudden he's, he's, he's flying through the sky. And he looks up, and this angelic being is holding him like this. And he says they're flying in the sky, and the angel's wings are covering him. And he says as they're going up through, he says like he was going up through space, he said, as he was getting closer to this bright light, as he's getting closer to this bright light, he said, all of a sudden, he said his skin began to peel. He started looking at his skin. He said, what's going on? His skin began to peel off. And he says, oh, my goodness, it was pure white, pure white. He said he began to be a being of light as he was traveling through the sky. This angel was shielding him as the transformation was taking place. Now, this is what's happened inside of many people they don't realize. Now, you might look white, you know, right now. Come on, amen. <laughs> but on the inside, there is something much brighter. Come on, amen. amen. The Bible calls it a treasure in earthen vessels. You are packing treasure. The enemy is aware of you before you're aware of him. And he wants to put that light out. He wants to stop that light. He wants to just trick you to keep you from revealing that light. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. The Lord talks about us being stars. In Daniel, it says that we're stars. Come on, amen. 
stars in the firmament. Come on, amen. We are glorious lights. The, the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 17 that we are, come on, amen. The scripture says the path of the just is of the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. What's happening? There's an increase of the glory of God inside of you every day. The Bible says the inner man is being renewed day by day. Come on, amen. The more you give up and the more you surrender yourself, the more the light of God starts to shine. Come on, on the inside of you. Hallelujah. In Matthew 16, when Jesus goes up to the Mount of Transfiguration, how many remember that? Before he goes up, he gives this prophecy. In the 28th verse, 16, Matthew 16, 28, he gives this prophecy. He says, there will be some standing here that shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, how many know if, if what he was saying was, come on, that they were not going to die till they saw the kingdom, then they would still be alive today, wouldn't they? But in the next verse, it was manifested when he was actually in the Mount of Transfiguration. And the scripture says his face shone like light. And his garment was white as light. That was a glimpse into the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God in the earth. We are the kingdom of God in the earth. We are the ones who have dominion in the earth realm. So what does he do? He shows a revelation here. Enoch, how many don't remember Enoch? Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Why? Because he had faith. Faith caused translation. We go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. I believe with all my heart that God is going to increase the church, come on, in such a place that we're going, to be we're going to be seeing transformations of people's lives, real transformations like we've never seen before. It's getting ready to hit. Come on, amen. And that's because the church is going to wake up. Now, how many know the glory and sin don't mix? Like oil and water. So whenever God shows up with his glory, watch out, sin, come on, amen, will be dealt with. One guy said he was watching, listening to people singing, Lord, send your glory. They were singing. And he was like, he said, God told him right there. He says, they don't know what they're asking me. If I really release my glory, will they, will they still be holding on to that sin? Come on, amen. amen. See, because that will bring judgment on you. All right? So let me close this out here. I'm trying to close it out. Moses' face shone from the outside because the light was coming from the outside, Right? And it was hitting his face. And his face was lit with the glory of God. So to the point that they had to cover his face. He had to cover his face with a veil. Because of the light shining. Come on, from his face. He had to cover his face with a veil. Amen. And because of that, come on, amen, people look at that and they go, wow, wow, wow. But do you know the New Testament revelation is that the glory is now inside of you, no longer on your face? And when he says in Isaiah 60, arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen, watch this, upon you. That means it's coming up. Come on, amen. And it's manifesting. When we worship God, a lot of you don't know, but the room is being filled up with your praises like glory cloud, like mist. Whew. Come on, amen. I want to encourage you today. We need to go. We need to move into a place of desiring God's glory to be released. I believe that the glory in heaven and the glory in the earth, come on, amen, is going to combine and there's going to be an explosion. And we're going to see healings. We're going to see miracles without even trying to do it. It's just going to start happening naturally. The Lord told me, he says, Calvin, I want you, he says, to start praying for people who are sick just to be praying for them. Keep on praying. Keep on speaking the word. Do it because I want you to exercise your authority in, in, in the spirit that I've given you. And I want you to use what I've given you and watch me begin to heal the sick. Oh, y'all, come on, Amen. We're moving by faith, and you're open, causing that glory, come on, to open up on the inside of you. Many of us, come on, amen, are still hiding the glory that God has put on the inside of us. Come on, amen. When I, uh, when I was younger, praise the Lord. I'm still young, but I was younger. Thanks, Ryan. Um, I was praying with a friend of mine. We were praying. And it was, a ch it was a church, and it was dark in the church because we turned the lights out, and he went in that corner, and I went in that corner. We just laid on our faces and cried out to the Lord. I turned, you know, on my, on my back and was crying out to God, praying in the spirit. Right while, I'm, right while I'm doing that, you know, let me see here if I can use it. Can I use your cloth? Your, your, what's this here? Yeah. What is this, a scarf? Yeah. Right while I'm, I'm, I'm laying there praying in the spirit like that, something went like this on me. Okay, well, you know, black people, we get scared kind of quick, some of us. So, yeah, some of us. 
So I jumped up, like, what in the, because he had just walked out of the room. He went to the restroom or something, and I was in there by myself, praying, and something just hit me like, I'm saying, what? What just hit me? <laughs> Come on, amen. So I came out. You know, I got I said, I got time to me get out of here. This stuff is going off, off in this room. Y'all, y'all, come on, y'all, some of y'all would probably do the same thing. Come on, amen. Something just fell on you like that, and you just, what is going on? Come on, amen. So I walked out. Man, I'm starting to see glory right now. I walked out, and as I'm walking out, there was this woman, and she was, she was doing the vacuum in the floor. She stopped and looked at me, and she said, brother, you are, brother, there's light on you. The Lord spoke to me. He said, while I was praying, oh, man. The glory inside of me, come on, amen, and the glory of God came on, to, on, on me, come on, amen, manifested, come on, amen, on my face physically. I begin to have glory come on me physically. Now, sometimes what happens, and I'm going to tell you this, I've seen this happen. There are times when I am worshiping, and this happened to me like, what was, it, was it a few weeks ago or something, Brian? We, we were doing some ministry together. I started feeling something in my face. Like it was just like there, just like I couldn't explain it. Come on, amen. How many know the presence of God will rise up, come on, on you, come on, amen, and will manifest itself, come on, on you, and God will bring deliverance, come on, amen, to people by, when you step into what God's called you to step in. Now, how many know that encouraged me? When she said to me, she started prophesying. The woman says, arise and shine. for thy. The woman started prophesying to me, thy light is come, the glory of the Lord is risen. She started prophesying. How many know that, that works for every one of us? Every one of you, God wants you to arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Church, we are, apostles and prophets are examples. Come on, amen. God uses us as examples. Come on, amen, to the church. 